commissioning on the vertical BC box. So one of the first thing I'm going to check here is make sure the power coming in is correct and that my communications voltage between the outdoor unit and this vertical BC box is also correct. So we'll start off with the power. So I'm going to set that to AC, put that somewhere you can see it. And we'll start off from Earth because Earth what keeps us alive. So between Earth and neutral, next to nothing, good. Live and Earth, I've got around about 244 volts. I've got slightly higher voltage than normal because I've got a lot of PV on top of the roof. And between live and neutral, same voltage, 244. Next thing I'm going to check is I'm going to have a look at the communications voltage. So this is 30 volts DC I should be seeing around about that. So change that to DC voltage. And then I've got connections over here. This is my Mnet connection. And I should be seeing 29 volts DC. Once you've checked those voltages, we're already at a stage where we've got refrigerant into the system, so that's part of it's all done. And that's all been done properly and correctly. What we've done next also is do the addressing. So the addressing for the outdoor unit, the BC box, and all the indoor units are done. We've got that communications cable going all the way around, and we've got the controls in place as well. Next thing we're gonna do after that, we're gonna start playing about some dip switches in here to start doing some of the air removal and debris removal. And I'm gonna talk you through that next. So SW1 number one. What that's going to do is it's going to start opening those valves up. SW001 number two, that's going to make it so it ignores potential float switch problem. Because we're potentially going to have a lot of water going through the bottom of this unit as we're forcing water through the circuit. So that's part of the reason for that, so the float switch doesn't get activated. If you forget to switch that dip switch off, it will start activating that float switch again after nine hours. So you've got a nine hour grace period to get this done. The next dip switch you're gonna do is SW2 number one. What this is gonna do, and you're just about to see on display there, it's gonna say air one. So what it's gonna do now is it's gonna start the pumps in a start stop manner. Now it's trying to knock any dirt and debris around the circuit and to the actual strainer so I can take that dirt out of the system. After it's finished doing that, it then comes up going air two. That's where it puts it in a fixed flow and just force it all around that circuit again, just trying to bring any of that debris back. Air E is now showing on the display to tell me that that debris removal has been completed. We're going to close off the valves going to the unit. I'm going to close off my isolation valves going off to the indoors themselves on the flow and on the return. And then I need to change some dip switches. So basically I'm changing back the ones that we've already done on SW number two. So SW2 number one, SW2 number six. Switch those into the off position. And then we're gonna clean those strainers. You'll need to remove the bottom covers to get to the actual strainers. Remove the strainers. Clean, inspect, and then replace the strainers. So we're now going to get on with the air removal. So the strains are all back in place. My isolation valves are all opened up. And SW2 number three. And you'll see there it's going to go back into doing air one, air two, but it's also going to do air three and air four. And I'll talk you through that as it goes through the actual cycle. So at air one, we're going to start those pumps in an on-off situation, I'm trying to force the air up into the actual AAV. So we're just trying to encourage the air in the right places. On air two, pumps are gonna run at fixed speed, we're trying to force as much water as we can into those indoor units, to try and force the air out and towards the AAVs. Air three, pumps will run at a fixed speed and will open each leg up individually and it'll take 10 minutes per leg. So this is where it can take quite a long time with the actual commissioning process, so be aware of this. With air four, the system goes into heating mode. The idea being is we can get more air out of the system by warming that water up, and we run those pumps again to try and force the air into the right places to get it out of the system. Once it's complete, it'll come up saying either air E, which means it's all been completed successfully, 
or it'll come up saying ERR, which means it's in fault, and you'll have to try and work out why it hasn't managed to get the error out of the system. You may well need to run it again, but have a check as to why it might not have managed it. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set some of those distances back where it needs to be. So SW2 number 3, I'm going to set that from being on to being off because we've finished that process. As part of the testing process, I'm going to run those pumps up and I'm just going to listen to hear if I can hear any air going around the system. The way we're going to do that is SW2 number 5 into the on position. If you start hearing some noises coming from the pumps, when we start running that all up, so noise, gurgling noises, things like that, what sounds like air in the system, we will need to go back and run through that air removal again. If you're happy with the sound coming from the pumps, you can't hear any air gurgling around the system, then simply switch that SW2 number 5 back to the off position. But also whilst we're here, we're going to switch off SW number one and number two because I don't need those safeties switched off anymore so that's going to allow the drain float to work correctly and things like that so all the things we switched off at the beginning I'm putting all the safeties back in place and that is your air removal completed and all ready to get on with the rest of the commissioning so it's just testing it up all and running in heating and then what I do then is I run each unit after that in cooling so keep it all running in heating the first unit into cooling and make sure the indoor unit starts doing cooling. What we're doing there is we're making sure the indoor units are connected up the way we thought they were. And make sure everything's working correctly so we're getting decent air off temperatures.